Hi everyone, we're here again at Carnegie Lake Bar Park and doing a little continuation of our breed program and with us today we have Kelly Daly and her dog Max. Max, which is a what kind of dog? Llewellyn Setter. Llewellyn Setter and of course helping me, I have, hate to admit this, but helping me today <laughs> is Robin Peterson. I think she's here to agitate me <laughs> rather than to help me. So we're going to start. Kelly, tell us a little bit about the breed standard for one of you. Tell us just about Max in general. Okay, um, Max is four. And he, like you said, is a Llewellyn Setter. He is an orange Belton. Um, so He's a he, what? Orange Belton. What does that mean? Two colors. He's not a tri-color. He okay. has the tan, um, the eyeliner. Um, here, point him. Point his little face. Do you care if I do this? No, no he doesn't care. No. There we go. Here. Here's his over there. Okay, did you come on? So that they can see his face. And, um... There we go. Oh, he, we use him to hunt birds, and he's obviously also a family pet. And then I'll be using him also as um, as a therapy dog, in in private practice. Oh, once we so, go through the testing, that's, yeah. that's her goal. Oh, all right, that sounds yeah. like a good. So plan. you'll be seeing more of him. Yeah. Oh, um, wonderful. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> well, so no, he's, tell, me, well, tell me that again. I Meaning they're two color. Tell me what was that term? Well, well there's tri color. So that has the darker brown, the white, and then the tan ticking. Okay. Um, he's what they call an orange belton. So he has the tan ticking. He's born white. Sure. They're born completely white. They're born completely white, and they get this brown to them. Mm -hmm. And in the litter that was born, do you have any idea were any of them the uh, have any black, or were they all like this? There was a mix. There was a mix. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, breeding um, does not determine. The colors, for sure. You could oh, okay. even breed two orange buttons and still get a tricolor. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Anyways, Robin, what else do we want to know? Oh, just about the breed in general. How? How? Yeah, how so, way? tell us all about that. So when Kelly called and, and registered to bring um, Max to school, because her goal is to have him tested for um, for therapy dog. Um, she said, "I have a new one and I said, "You have a what? What?" <laughs> <laughs> because I, I wasn't I familiar with. The breed, and as you can see, he is just extremely friendly. And mm -hmm. and I wish you know people watching this could touch him because he's so 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 silky soft. Um, and um, so when we decided to do this program, I had to do my research too um, because I don't know much about Llewellyns. But we were just discussing this before we went on the air, and I asked Kelly. I said so. My go-to is AKC's breed um, page to find out information about the dogs and where they came from and what their standards are supposed to be and what their health issues are. That's where I always go. So I went there yesterday and there was nothing on Llewellyn and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. So I researched more and I found them. And so my question to you was, and you answered this earlier, but we're gonna let people know, if you wanted to register him AKC, you would have to register him as a English setter. As an English setter, mm -hmm. not a Llewellyn setter, mm -hmm. because they don't recognize Llewellyns as a separate breed. They recognize them as a variant of the breed, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's kind of how I was reading into that. Yeah, that's so, quite the controversy with the breed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So the difference that I read between a Llewellyn setter. Um, and an English setter in stature mm -hmm. is um, the ears are different, mm -hmm. a little bit shorter, yep. I think I read. Um, but, and, and the overall confirmation is just little slight differences that, that uh, unless you were a fancier of the breed, I don't think a normal person would notice. Mm -hmm. the difference. A bird um, hunter would notice. Uh, yes, that's what, mm -hmm. the, but what I did notice, or what I did find out, um, and I'm going to um, yield to my notes here because I am not a Llewellyn setter pers personally, but um, they bred them to stay closer to the hunter. They range closer to the hunter mm -hmm. than the English setters do. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really interesting. They're that also they um, more agile and they're bred for warmer climates then. Um, yeah, and, and the other thing that I read was, um, so when they came to, to the America from, from over in England, the English setters weren't doing as well in archery. 
and that's where the Llewellyns mm -hmm. really stepped up. Mm -hmm. Kelly, why did, so, you buy, why did you buy, what made you go after this breed? That's my husband. Um, so husband. He's he, at fault. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Um, Max is actually our second Llewellyn setter. Um, really? We had an older um, dog that, this is a, a Crawford County story actually, um, from the breeder was Lynn Hill Llewellyn's, which was Keith Smith, um, Keith and Tessa in Sagertown. Oh, okay. And they had um, a, a beautiful line, and uh, in 2001 we bought Zeus, and he lived for 16 years. Wow. He's a phenomenal uh, bird dog. So they uh, don't, don't do that anymore, and my husband did some research, wanted the same line. So he found the breeder where those um, stud dogs had gone, uh -huh. and then we were able to get Max. So Max is the same line. And where's he from, actually? UP, Michigan, almost Wisconsin. So you went to Wisconsin to get him, or they, got, they shipped him here? They shipped him. Um, so that's an interesting story, too. So they had uh, a litter mate was also coming into Pittsburgh. Um, so they flew them together, and I, in my wildest dreams, I never thought I would go to the airport to pick up a dog, but I, but I can pick say that I did that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah so they, that was in a snowstorm and other things, so, yeah. So you and your husband train dogs to hunt? Yeah. Because we were talking, you also have a Chessie. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us about his drive to hunt, because what I was reading, um, what I was it? What I was reading was nice, Dan. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Um, their hunt instinct o overtakes everything. Mm -hmm. um, they said that they can be difficult to potty train, to housebreak. Was that true for you? Um, not the housebreaking part, um, but if you are someone who wants a dog because you want the dog to love you and mm -hmm. sort of which he does. He yeah. does, yeah. He he's does. very, he's very um, devoted to you. But outside, he's very uh, disinterested in humans. Once he gets outdoors. Up, once he gets to um, his He wants to chase shadows, leaves, chipmunks, uh, birds, butterflies. The instinct takes over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, that's where it's nice to have two different breeds mm -hmm. because where the Chessie is more play fetch with me, you know, more of a right. traditional retriever type right. of dog. Right. And um, if, once you're outdoors, he's on a mission. Um, he's, he's definitely, you know, out in front of you. Um, that's why in the class, to get him to heal mm -hmm. when we're walking, yeah. he's bred to be out in front. Friend, right. And then um, it took us a while to break him of this on the halter and leash. He wants to zigzag. Well, then you're gonna trip, you right. know, if you're going mm -hmm. at a decent right. pace. Uh, but that's what he's bred to, to do, do right? Mm -hmm. To flush him up. Yep. Okay. Yeah. He's searching. Right. Yeah. So, um, and we were talking. Um, so I have Goldens, and I'm out of my comfort zone working my new puppy to hunt. Um, mm -hmm. But we are duck and pheasant. Um, mm -hmm. But water is their magnet. They they like to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and he's not. A water. Yeah, we had him swim once, and he looked um, he looked like I would picture Snoopy, <laughs> you know, pointing straight up, butt down, splashing like like you thought he was drowning. I mean, they're they're a very uh, thin breed. Um, yeah. He eats uh, two cups of food twice a day. Wow. Um, oh he just burns. My, my, mine would weigh yeah. 800 pounds so a day. My, so is my he, calling. Yeah. yeah, they're just that active. Come here, Max. Hey, Max. Come back out so people can see you. And um, <laughs> see, he loves people. He does. Um, so we, that's actually one of his nicknames at home. Um, if it's raining outside, he doesn't even want to go out to use the bathroom. So he's Princess Paws. He's Princess Max. Paws. Yeah. He's Princess Paws. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's definitely not, not a swimmer. He'll splash around. Um, and he thinks that's great, but he, uh, if you took him to a water park, he'd love the splash area where the water's shooting up, like for the toddlers. Oh yeah, yeah, he but would he think that was great. In mm -hmm. water. So, mm -hmm. the, what's, what's he weigh? Um, he is only actually about 40 pounds. Is that generally what they About 50, yeah, he's a little bit smaller, but the males generally weigh about 50 pounds. So and and what about as far as care of him? What, do you, what care does he take? Um, so the biggest part for him is trimming his feet. Um, he will get briars and it'll get mangled a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, tangled up. Um, and, and brushing his ears out and the, you know, his little wispy hairs down mm -hmm. here behind his feathers. Yeah. yeah. But that's um, all that the care is involved, there's nothing. Okay. No, they're just like a regular dog. I mean, you brush their teeth right. and take them to the vet, but yeah. it's, it's nothing, um, they're a very healthy, very, very healthy breed. I was just going to ask you, are they prone to any type of uh, diseases or 
issues or anything? I only found elbows and hips. That's the only thing that they but could have worse than any other no, dog. No, and, and not, I mean, that was the only thing that I found that they even clear them for is elbows okay. and hips. And any dog that's this size gets cleared for that. Yeah. So it doesn't even mean it's a problem with them. It just nope. means it's something that they do. And, and as always, dogs that have drop down ears are more prone to ear infections than dogs that have stand up ears. So, um, like um, Jill just said, his ears, she has to check his ears to make sure um, that that doesn't happen um, to him. When he's so, been out hunting, he'll get, you know, yeah, liars, you know, you have to get to call him out. Yeah. So, um, is he a good, is he good at hunting? Oh, yes. Is he? Oh, yes. Yeah, like what? I mean, what, what will he see it in him? Um, he will hunt pheasant, grouse, quail. Uh, those, I guess, would be the big three for the Llewellyn Center. Oh, and where do you go to find this dog in the woods anywhere? Um, well, they're not as popular as, um, or as, as populous as they once were um, mm -hmm. on the public game lands. There are some, um, but then he'll go also to private reserves. And then we also will stock our own property, um, which is nice. We can just go out back and um, my husband will go get, you know, a dozen birds and then um, he'll take them and stock them. And, and that's, that's nice for kids because then you can go out and, um, you know, they're right there. Yeah, it's kind of like stopping the pond um, yeah. like fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will he kill them when he gets them? No. He's a soft mouth. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, um, so he will he will fetch. Um, but what's what this breed does, um, for folks that don't know, is um, they'll cover a wide range. You know, you, you have a release command, mm -hmm. um, and they'll cover a wide range of area, uh, and they'll find the bird, and then they hold the point until you essentially catch up to him um, and then there's and he'll hold it and wait and wait um, once you've trained him to do mm -hmm. that and then there's a release command ours is okay um, some people literally say release um, whatever your preference is and then they'll flush the bird they shoot the bird and then he'll bring it back hmm. to me that's what makes hunting fun um, I'm sure I'm not I'm not gonna sit in a tree stand you know and, and freeze and be right. bored um, but it's great exercise. Um, it's fun to watch the dog work and how happy they are to oh, please it's you. It's amazing. It's um, amazing. It's when, a different when, bond. When you bring their instinct out yep. and watch them, it, it oh, bless you. you. It is. Yeah. It bless you. Bless you. <laughs> oh, what is there something in here that's making this noise? Oh, I'll sneeze again. Goodness. What did you do? Yeah, there must be something. Go in the um, but it, it's just amazing to watch them work for what they were bred to do. Mm -hmm. Just to to be able to watch them go out in the field and find what they're looking for, like like that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. And you said it's a good family dog. Excellent. Yeah, they um you can keep them outdoors in a kennel, um, but I, he's an inside dog for sure. And how's he with kids? And kids good. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the breed in general, that's not just him, the breed in general is very, very good with, yeah. with kids, with mm -hmm. families. Um, their size and their lightweight makes them very easy to handle. Um, you know, I mean, I, if there were to be another dog, I mean, I, I could pick him up if I had to with the holler. He's, you know, he's just really gentle. He's mm -hmm. just, and he's, not, yeah. and he's not reactive. Um, he sees another dog and he's like, yeah, I see you, but I really don't care. Mm -mm. Um, he, do he's, he doesn't, he doesn't interact with his environment unless it's his environment. So, so, um, like in class, he's, he's aware of the other dogs and he sees them and whatever, but he's not worried about them. He doesn't seem to care. Out in the field, that would be his environment where he would interact. Um, mm -hmm. He's, and he he just, well with other dogs yeah, too. Yeah, he just is. He just is wherever he is. But but it's like his love is out there in that field, and you you just see that in him. Here. But he's very he's very connected to Jill. I've watched her son more. Not to Jill, Kelly. Or to Kelly. I don't know why I said Jill. That's it's because she's in your class. Um, no. She is. He's. He. I've seen him work with Noah, um, mm -hmm. and. Um, so I've seen him swap back and forth and um, just really... And you said your plan is to hopefully make him into a therapy dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is an yeah. indication of what he's going to do. I, I think we're real problem. concerned, yeah. but not. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's no, really yeah. just a nice dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yes. has a, he's very soothing to pet, mm -hmm. um, and he doesn't... Um, 
He's not pushy at all, really. I mean, he's no. not he's very much no. just for sitting. No. Yeah, and he's he's just real gentle. He has a very nice personality, and he's quiet. He's he's just yes. really quiet. That's mm -hmm. that probably it's probably what sums him up. Even when he like he wants in her lap right now, he's just extremely gentle mm -hmm. about all oh, of it. He's not pushy or demanding on on that. Um, although I guess we are pretty pushy. And you also her. have a pause. Well, Golden Center? What do you have at home? Ches uh, Chesapeake, Chesapeake Bay. Retriever. And how do they differ from one another? She's a little bit of a bully. Mm -hmm. um, she thinks she's in charge. Uh, she will. Uh, she wants the first drink of water when mm -hmm. the water dish is filled. She wants his food that he isn't fast enough to eat because, mm -hmm. of course, she's a vacuum um, mm -hmm. with her own food and he takes longer to eat. Um, mm -hmm. He's a little bit more delicate. If you could get one of them for a, another dog, a third, not three dogs is crazy because I know that. <laughs> But if you took out another dog, would you get another one of these, or would you get another one? One Chessie per household is enough, one and Chessie. I love her. Um, I love her dearly, but they're they're stubborn. Okay. They're bigger to handle, um, so I. They're very strong personalities. Yeah, they they really are. Yeah, they're and she's strong. also a lovely dog mm -hmm. for what she's bred for. Um, but if I if I was going to get another one, which in case my husband sees a recording of this, we're not getting another yeah. dog. <laughs> <laughs> But so it would be Llewellyn. I have a question that everybody asks because you know Goldens are notorious for this. But how much does he shed? I wouldn't say as much as a golden or a typical long hair. Um, he he's what I would consider a medium hair um, dog. He it's it's very manageable. Um, it's it, you're not finding you know tufts of hair under tables well, he's not and under double coated. Correct. So, yeah. Correct. Robin, anything you want to add? No, I just, I love him. I just. Well, he's a nice dog. I'm, he's, I'm impressed. He's, he's a really nice dog. And he's, yes. he's now just, that. yeah. Well, you know what? He's not sure about being in here. When he is here, he, he is a, um, a client mm -hmm. of this place. So yeah, when he, he comes here, he's yeah. used to doing other things. You just didn't know you had a gem under your roof. That's all. I didn't. You didn't. No, see. I didn't. I kept telling her I'm bringing a Llewellyn setter, and she had no idea that it was And then was as soon as I saw him, I remember yes, you seeing Yes, yes, Okay, well, thanks very much. We appreciate you coming in, Kelly, and uh, good luck to you. Thank luck you for having us. And uh, we'll see where we go after this. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. We are in our second part of this series now, where we just did the um, Llewellyn setter, and now we're going to do a Doberman. And with this, of course, Robin Peterson is here to do this interview and basically be the person that asks the questions, and she's going to introduce to you the people that we have with us today. Okay, so this is Karen and this is Bob, and this, Shady, this is Shady. And Shady is a chihuahua, right? She looks like no! a chihuahua. No! We were supposed to do a chihuahua. <laughs> so Shady is a Doberman pincher, and um, he is one of my all-time favorite um, students and Lyric, my and, puppy. And wait, wait, why is this not one of your all-time favorite students? Because he, I, I just love his personality. Um, he, and I like these people because they're devoted to him and they have invested in him and they're serious about their work with him. Um, it, they're good handlers, and um, and he's a nice boy because he has stable breeding and he has them as their family. Okay, um, let's talk about so the breed standard. Stable. Tell us about the breed standard for a, for a Doby. For a Doberman, um, a female should be 24 to 26 inches in height from the shoulders. Um, it should weigh 60 to 90 pounds, a male should be 26 to 28 inches in height and should weigh 75 to 100 pounds. Right, so when you hear people say, oh, I've got a Doberman, he weighs 120 pounds, your first thought is, he's fat. The dog is fat. And he needs to lose weight. Yeah, that's your first thought. So, Shady very much represents the breed, and I've always told you he was pretty, and don't you think he is? It's gorgeous. Yes. What color do Dobies come in? They come in black, blue, red, and fawn colored, and they have rust markings. Which you can do see. they all have rust markings? I think they I, do. Do they? Yes. yes. A little bit of them in any ways? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've not, I've only seen one blue, um, ever. I've only seen one blue, not that, I just don't think they're as 
color. prevalent as the reds and the and the blacks. And what about the other markings? Are the markings on the dough base always the same? So yes, they should be on the face, above the eyes, in the ears, the chest, the legs, and then behind his buttocks. And not everybody crops the ears. No. His ears are up. Crop, his ears are cropped. Not everybody does crop the ears, and not everybody crops the tail. Oh, I can't, I've never seen a dobie with a tail, I don't think, but I've certainly seen some with down ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to see less of the cropped ears and, and those things with all the breeds, because I think people are getting really hesitant about doing anything like that. And, uh, and just, well, the reason paper. being with the cropped ears and the tails were back when these, um, this breed was developed, they cropped the ears and the tails, so being a protection dog, if somebody would enter your house, and the dog would attack him, your instinct would be to grab his ears to keep him off you or the tail. Mm -hmm. So they cropped him so people could not wow. grab hold of him. There he is, there's my boy. Look okay, at those he's ears. actually gorgeous. What, what possessed you to get a dog? I've always wanted one. You've never had one before. And she made a comment to me and she gets everything she <laughs> asked for. <laughs> Yeah, there was a, three years ago, there were people breaking into numerous houses where she lives. And while I'm at work, I wanted something there that would keep her safe, so. So he's your first doughy. And I'm sorry that I never had it in the past, because that's the dog I've ever had. Have you ever had a doughy before? No, I've had a Dalmatian. What made you want a, a doughy? Just the look of him, um, the square body on him, the. He looks really mean. He's very, very friendly with other dogs, other people. Um, good with children. I have a granddaughter. She'll be two at the end of May. He's very gentle with her. She can walk him on a leash with us also holding the leash. Mm -hmm. But he's very gentle with her. Um, very good with children, other dogs, people. What are their three strongest characteristics? They're protective? Very intelligent. I am fearless. They fear himself. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, they even stated that on the thing that they're fearless. They call them the noblemen of they dog are kind. Very noble. That's what they. That's what they call them. Um, but um, yeah, energy level. Let's talk about energy level. Um, on a scale it, of one to ten. It depends. He has different modes that he goes into. When he wants to play, energy level is a ten. Or but 15, probably. He's, but if there's kids around, he's very calm and relaxed. And But could you, so for sake of people that don't know, and he's beautiful. There's just no getting around the fact that he is a, he's gorgeous. And people are going to be watching this, and they're going to look at him and say, oh, that's a beautiful dog, and I want one of them. And they live in a third floor apartment, and they work 12 hours a day. Good dog for them to have? Absolutely not. Why? Being a working breed, we try to keep his mind stimulated 24 hours a day because a tired dog is a good dog and they need a lot of work presented to them. Not in my pocket. <laughs> you know, cookies in there. He's very food driven. Yes, yes. I he's, don't think there's any in there he's, now. He's, he's usually very, very is. food driven. Yeah. No, I want you. And I know if I was in my 20s or 30s, this would not be the breed for me, especially if I have kids, because you're, he, all of our time goes into him. He goes everywhere we go. He's been to Bar Harbor, Maine. He's been to um, the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. He's been down to, in Ohio, um, the Amish communities. And we're going on vacation here shortly to North Carolina just for him to take him down to the beach and learn. Are there restrictions on taking a Doberman into places? Some may have restrictions. You mean like hotels and different facilities and that? I would think some would be, there would be restrictions on him. We, we ran into that. Breed discrimination happens, and you'll run into it because you have Adobe. Um, and it doesn't matter that he's a sweetheart just because he's Adobe. Some places won't let you in that will let a, a, a chihuahua in that will bite somebody's ankles. Um, that, that is the difference. Like, he heard that scratching look at him. Um, I think my dog's out. But you think your dog's out? Excuse me, I'm going to have to walk in front of you here. Let me see if I can sneak underneath. <laughs> no, it's no, no. It all boils down to the insurance that the Great. establishments carry. Some insurance companies will not allow them to have the government right. into there. Right. But we always find, there's always somewhere yeah. that right. we can find. Right. There's a couple places where we live, that, um, businesses that let dogs come in, and he's gone in with there. And, really well behaved with other dogs. Yeah, he's, he is very well behaved. But like 
like we stated earlier, you, you guys are um, the reason that he, one of the reasons, first off, his breeding is stable. Um, his temperament is, is a stable temperament and that, um, that has to do with his breeding, but, um, but the work that you've put into him shows. Um, he's, but, so you train at my school, but you also train at another place which just shows how much work they've put into him. Um, yeah, and you're, you're taking him on vacation. You take him everywhere you go. He's very much a part of your family. So a person that lives in a third floor um, apartment and works 12 hours a day, their energy level is too much for that. Um, he, would, he would be a destructive dog in that situation. Be happy. And hyper because he needs to burn up that energy. And one of the reasons that he can stand here calm. Now, yes, he's curious. He wants to see what's going on and he hears things. And that is who he is. He ha he's alert, but he's a protection dog. He's supposed to be alert. Um, just like we talked about um, the, the hunting dog that we had before you, um, their instinct is their instinct. And he's always aware of what's happening around him. But the reason that he can be calm is because he doesn't have all that built up energy. Mm -hmm. And that's because you've researched your breed and you do what he needs. And as you mentioned, he is a personal protection dog. Um, there are a couple other types of protection and that's they have um, dogs that protect your home. Um, basically the Mastiffs, the Bull Mastiffs, the English Mastiffs. Um, then we have the personal protection dogs that he will protect more than just the home. He will protect us if we go to ATM, if we go into a store, if we're walking a bike trail. He's always there to protect you. And then there's the canine police dogs that are protecting other things, um, sniffing out drugs, chasing criminals. And, right. But he, he is so aware of our surroundings at all times. I don't fear anything taking him anymore because I believe he will protect us. Yeah. I have a question for you because I'm not, I'm not into protection dogs at all. I want people to be able to walk into my house and they why would why do you as, as two individuals want a protection dog? I mean, all the, it's, on, it's on point all the time. In today's world that we live in, I trust nobody. I don't know who's coming to my house, who's um, going to try to steal her wallet at the grocery store, and just his look alone sends people the other way. Right. Would he bite? I don't believe so, but he is a protection dog, so I don't know so. Right. You know what I, mean? I walk on the bike trail a lot by myself, and I feel a lot safer with him with me. I mean, just his look. Um, yeah. People pass yeah. me, and they some go across the other trail, and mm -hmm. just the look of him. I mean, I feel that I can walk on a bike trail alone by myself with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's very striking. I mean, oh, he, he, he catches your eyes. He's very, very striking. Okay, let's talk about. Um, we, we've talked about the the size that they should be and and the weight and their markings and those types of things. What about health issues for a Doberman? What are their major health issues? They have what's called well. Willebron. Oh, yeah, Willebrons. Uh, Willebrons. Von, Von Willebrons. Von yeah. Willebrons, which is a bleeding disorder. It's a clotting um, disorder. That doesn't allow their blood to clot if they get a cut. With him, he is free of that, I believe, because whenever he does bleed, it stops pretty much instantly. Where some breed, some Dobermans, it won't stop whatsoever. So that's one of the clearances that the breeders will will um, one of the health clearances they'll test for him before they before they breed for puppies yeah. yeah okay um he can have hip dysplasia mm -hmm. um, eye disease problems one of the things that he can be prone to because can you turn him so he so his front is facing that camera a little bit this chest right here look at how broad his chest is you see how broad that his chest is right here Dogs that have broad chest, deep chest, and he's very deep chest, they're susceptible to, dad, that's out of my reach, um, they're susceptible to bloat. Um, so, um, Weimaraners, um, Dobies, uh, big, deep chested dogs are susceptible to bloat. So, that is something that 
um, is not a health clearance thing. That's not that that is that is um, an event that can happen. Um, so I know that I know that that can be an issue. Not not just Dobies, but anybody that's deep chested, which he falls into. So um, so that's something that you have to watch out for. If they drink way way too much water, eat eat heavily, and then exercise heavily, it can cause bloat. Um, and it can become life-threatening extremely fast, extremely fast. Um, okay, so we've covered all of that. How about grooming? How about grooming? He takes very little grooming. I don't like we usually people. bathe him <laughs> twice a year. Um, <laughs> we just brush him. Um, he sheds very little. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, one nice thing is you see no hair in the house and you definitely smell no dog whatsoever in the house. Are you bragging? And I, like <laughs> I think that. he's bragging. <laughs> I like dog that. hair is part of my life. Um, yeah, he's, so, so doing research, um, not only are they called noble, they're also called wash and wear, um, which is, which can be really envious of people like me who, um, if my dogs go swimming, it's three hours of grooming afterwards just to wash them out and dry them. Can they swim? And so Very awkwardly, he has not been up to his chest in the water yet. Mm -hmm. Last year he would go in, but not very high. Ruby um, loved to swim. Kind of like watching a deer swim with all legs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of them start that way though, they um, until they learn and then they all doggy paddle like high and splash until if they have a love of water they'll learn to bring it down and do. We, we used to have a red doby in our therapy dog group and she played in the water all the time and she would swim and she would splash around and, and play. Um, but um, yeah, so yeah, he's a, he's a really nice boy but he goes to a coffee shop on Saturdays that allow dogs in and he lays at his feet. Most people don't even know when Bob has him inside a place like that because he's quiet and he lays down and he just picked up something off the floor. You might want to see what that was. Yeah, it didn't look like it's a good dog hair or something. No, it's like a stick or something. Ooh, what was that yours? <laughs> so, um yeah, he's just, he's very well-mannered. He represents his breed very nicely. Extremely obedient um, and smart. And very, very smart. Um, so, Bob, when you're out walking him in public, um, many times you've told me that you just put your leash around your neck and you don't actually... I don't know where it's all come from. I know a lot has come from training, but he's incredible in public. Like, he heals. He does not try to sniff on people. The only thing I'm worried about is if a kid's walking down the street with an ice cream cone. Yes, he's he very might want to steal it, but yeah. he's so well behaved in public. But we take him everywhere. We take him to every store possible, and honestly, we still take him into Home Depot, and they all love him in there. He walks right by a cart. Perfectly, whenever I stop, he automatically will just sit yeah. and wait. So I don't know if it's all training, but a lot of it has been. It's, it's, it's interaction, too. You know, it's, it's what you guys do with him. He just loves people. Yeah. He's always with us. He's always out in the yard with us. Um, anytime we're out doing yard work or anything, he's out there with he us. He just yawned at you. <laughs> but now they say that they are a one-person dog, which I see that very much so at home because when we sleep at nighttime, he isn't even near me. I have all the room I want. He is totally on top of her. He follows her everywhere. But as far as obedience, he listens. He works better he for you. He works better for you than he does. He you. does he pushes work. Your yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you going, Shady? All right. So, so there's our there's our Mr. Shady, and he's how old again? Sixteen months. So he's still a pup. Yep, he's still just a pup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but he's he's probably reached physical maturity as far as 
He he's weighs very, approximately 86 pounds and his father was 95. So he's still got some muscle to build. Right, but height-wise height -wise he's probably his, reached his peak right. and he's very bored with us now. So, all right, do you have any other questions? I can't think of anything. Not at all. Hmm. Can you think of anything? No, I, I am. Um, where, where's he from? Where was he bred from around here? Wellsboro. Wellsboro. Okay. Yeah. Is there a breeder up here that there is? is. She only breeds them once a year, so okay. that's. It, they had to stop at my house. Um, they were doing cookies for a donation thing, and and um, I had them at my house from the lady who does my cookies for my graduations, and um, Lyric was what nine weeks old then. I just brought her home. He was in the truck. Nine week old puppy, no problem. He was just sweet as pie with her. He doesn't work with other dogs. No, nope. he, nope. he was gentle and easy with her and um, yeah, so he's just an impressive dog. So thank you guys very much for for bringing him and letting people see what the, look, there we go. I want to comment, and of course the smaller version of this is a min pin, min pin and then we've got the middle. Pitcher, pitcher. We've got the middle version, the German pincer. Oh, you know anybody has one? I know somebody has two of them, but they don't live around here. <laughs> okay. They yeah. have them. Yeah, they're, 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 uh, their whole personality is totally different than different. the min pin and the and this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're German pincer. Yeah, German pinchers. They're they're um, they're they're a challenge, I think. Yes, they are. I think they're a big challenge. Um, okay, well thanks very much. We appreciate it. Thank, well, you. thank you. Thank you very much. See you later. Thank you.